Circuits used to be considered the best thing ever in fitness. They used to be considered the best way to build muscle and to burn fat. And then somewhere along the way, it became that circuits were not even good at all and you should separate all of your exercises and you shouldn't be lumping them together. Well, the truth is really somewhere in the middle. You can certainly do circuits that are bad and we don't want to set circuits up in certain ways, but there are also certain ways that we can set circuits up that are good. So in this video, I want to take a look at how to set up circuits that don't suck. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Ryan Treadway, founder of TreadwayTraining.com, where we help busy professionals get more results in less time through online training and traditional one-on-one -on -one training. Now, when it comes to setting up circuits, there are a few rules that we want to follow here. Rule number one is we're not going to do big compound lifts in a circuit fashion. The reason that we don't want to use these exercises is that big compound movements cause a lot of global total body fatigue each subsequent exercise that you include in the circuit is going to be less and less effective than the ones that came before it and this is particularly of issue if we're doing exercises that require a lot of technique in order to not get injured so say for example any olympic lift we're not going to want to use those definitely uh, there's other things like barbell squats deadlift stuff like that we're not going to want to include any of those in a circuit and rule number two we don't want to include exercises that hit the same muscles so we don't want to do you know two back exercises we don't want to do two chest exercises three chest exercises we don't want to put exercises in a circuit that hit the same muscle for the same reason that we just talked about in a minute ago each time you do a subsequent exercise so let's say we superset a chest fly with a weighted push-up well we're not going to get as much benefit out of those push-ups because our chest is already going to be fatigued from having done the chest fly so if we're going to include exercises in a circuit they need to work different muscles a good example of this is actually a circuit that i did at the gym yesterday i was trying to get done with my workout faster so i did a preacher curl i did a rope tricep extension and then i did a lateral raise so i did a bicep exercise a tricep exercise and then a lateral delt exercise so none of those three exercises interfered with the other ones one because i was working small muscle groups so it wasn't causing a lot of global fatigue so it wasn't decreasing the amount of weight that i was able to do on each exercise that came after because of being tired and each of these exercises also worked a different muscle so that way i wasn't causing the effectiveness of each of the following exercises to go down because of that reason either another good example of this if we were going to do a circuit for legs we could do a leg extension a hamstring curl and a calf raise again we're hitting the quads we're hitting the hamstrings and then we're hitting the calves so again we're hitting three separate muscle groups with these three exercises and we're also doing exercises that aren't putting a lot of fatigue on the entire body so we're not getting winded or anything from doing these exercises so we're able to do each of these three exercises as efficiently as if we were to do them completely separately and not in a circuit fashion if we were going to do a full body circuit and we wanted to include more exercises in the circuit we could do something like a lateral raise some type of curl some type of tricep extension we could do a leg extension a leg curl and a calf so basically those two that we just talked about we could combine those together into one big full body circuit and as long as we're following these two rules we're not really going to be decreasing the effectiveness of any of the exercises because we're not going to be impacting the amount of weight that could be lifted in any one of these exercises as a result of any one of the other exercises in this circuit and that's what i mean about how circuits can definitely be set up in a way that's less optimal so let's actually take a look at how 
not to set up a circuit. So a way not to set it up, and I want to emphasize that again, not to do it this way, is to do something like a chest fly, a push up, some type of chest press, boom, 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 multiple chest exercises back to back to back or a tricep extension, a tricep push down, a close grip push up, stuff like that. We don't want to set those things up. Another bad example would be to do a, you know, a bicep curl with a dumbbell and a barbell and then a cable. So we're not going to do different types of the same exercises back to back to back because say for example, just for really easy numbers, let's say that I'm doing some type of chest exercises that I'm going to circuit three of them together. Well, let's just say again for easy numbers that I could do 100 pounds on each of these exercises if I did them separately. Well, if I put them together and I do the first set, then I would still be able to get my normal amount of weight. But then when I move on to the second exercise, I might only be able to get you know, 85 or 90 pounds and then move on to the third one, I might only be able to get you know, 60 or 65 pounds. I'm gonna be getting progressively more fatigued in my chest muscles and that's the exact opposite of what we want. We want to be able to be completely fresh for each of the exercises in the circuit because there's a principle known as progressive overload, meaning we're able to lift more weight on a given exercise over time. And that's the most important factor in actually building muscle. So if we're purposely setting things up in a way that we're not able to progress these exercises because we're getting tired from the earlier exercises, then that's not efficient from a muscle building perspective. So circuits can be a really effective tool if you do them correctly. Let's just take a look at the time savings. So let's say we were gonna circuit three exercises together and we were gonna do three sets on each of these exercises if we were to do them separately. So let's say just for again, easy numbers, we're gonna take one minute rest in between each set. Let's say we were gonna do a bicep, a tricep, and a lateral delt exercise. We're gonna circuit those together. So we do a bicep curl first, then we rest for one minute, do another bicep curl, another minute, another bicep curl, another minute. So that's three minutes rest, moving into the tricep extension, do the same thing, a minute rest after each set, that's another three minutes of rest. And then moving into the lateral raise, three sets again, that's three minutes of rest for each of the sets. So that comes out to be nine minutes of rest for each of these exercises once you combine them together. Whereas if you did these three exercises in a circuit fashion, then you would be doing these back to back to back to back. So there would be no rest in between the sets. I mean, realistically, there would be a few seconds to transition, but I mean, we won't count that for ease of the example. So we'll rest for one minute at the end of the whole circuit, do another set, one minute rest at the end of the whole circuit. And again, one minute rest at the end of the whole circuit. And so that'll be three minutes rest versus nine minutes rest. So we're saving a decent amount of time there. If you do you know, two or three of these circuits in one workout that way, then at that point, you're starting to save a decent amount of time at the gym. And like I said earlier, I deal mostly with busy professionals. So minutes matter. You know, they're, they're done with work, they work out, they wanna get home to, to see their family, to do the other things that they have to do when they get home. So if we can save several minutes on each workout over time, that becomes a pretty big deal. And last thing real quick, if you didn't watch last week's video, I just finished an ebook last week called Write Workouts That Get Results. It's 48 pages long and it's completely free. If you want to get that, then check out the first link down in the description. Again, completely free. So check that out. I'll be back Sunday with another fat loss topic on the Treadway Training Blogcast. So make sure to join us Sunday at 3 p.m. at treadwaytraining.com. As always, God bless you and your family, and I'll see you Sunday.